the endless march of time brings us into March. It's March and even though a lot of games have been pushed back, there is an abundance of titles this month. Luke, Yay. are you excited for them? I am excited. We're for the year is finally beginning, I games know. wise. This Thank is when it all you. kicks off Rawr. for realsies. Rip and tear into another Doom game as Doom Eternal arrives, ready to destroy every demon in its vicinity. This follow-up to the hugely successful Doom sees Doom Slayer make his way to Earth to deal with an infestation of demonic forces and save the human race from annihilation. Now you've played some of this. Yes, I have. Why don't you click the card if you want to see that? <laughs> Cards everywhere. Yeah, I mean, this is the one, man. I, I loved Doom 2016, the last Doom game, so much. It was just so it's much really fun good. to play. It was really straightforward and really, really simple. And uncomplicated, but not... Uh, basic. Um, mm. it, yeah, it was it was really really well balanced. It was just loads and loads of fun, and it was such a great single player campaign in an age where you know sort of short and sweet single player campaigns are becoming a you know something a rarity, something of a rarity. Yeah. So I'm really excited for Doom Eternal. There's a bit more emphasis on things like platforming and mm -hmm. and things like that, which I I'll be interested to see how that goes over because it is it, it is one step away from the kind of just you know walking through a corridor of butchery and mayhem, <laughs> you know, and insane glory kills, which is, you know, which is what the last Doom game was. Um, but the the levels seem really, really interesting. Uh, it's so much fun playing as the Doom Marine and just being the, being the Doom guy. In the short bit of the game that I've played alone, there were some unbelievable set pieces and just some really, really like out there over the top ludicrous stuff that, that definitely kind of goes beyond anything that was in the last game. So I don't know. I don't know if it will be as like neat and perfect uh, uh, an experience as Doom 2016, but I think it's got a really good shot. I'm really excited. Really and good shot, gun. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I am. Uh, I, I'm. I'm optimistic. Not even cautiously optimistic. I'm just optimistic. I'll be gutted if it turns out to be a bit disappointed. Basically. <laughs> Literally by Doom guy. <laughs> be gutted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'll just chainsaw me in half. <laughs> I wouldn't. I would mark it down for that. <laughs> Get ready to cry all the tears as yet another adorable, glowy adventure comes our way in Ori and the Will of the Wisps. With huge new enemies and loads more puzzle platforming, what will we discover when it comes to Ori's destiny? Da, 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 completely lost on me. I'm... Music in this game? <laughs> well, this <laughs> the isn't first the first game, Ori game, right? Love, no, yeah. second one. I love Ori and the Blind Forest so much. Very good, Metroid Vanery, you know, kind of. Yeah, get a new thing, go back, open up a new open path pathway. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and yeah. like, usually I'm kind of like, oh, backtracking, but with Ori, I was just like, yes, it's very good. Puzzle platforming mechanics, that you gradually unlock all these new things, and you're an adorable little big ear thing that kind of looks a bit like Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. It looks really cute. Yeah, and this one has an owl as well. <laughs> you heard it here first. It's an owl. Confirmed for owl. Maybe owl. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm really excited for it. I am uh, a little bit uh, about it, the tiniest bit, because uh, there are these huge new enemies. There's like kind of slightly larger boss battles, it feels like, in this one compared to the previous one, which is fine, except for one of them is a giant spider. Oh so, dear, yeah. okay, all right. I'm a little bit, there's gonna be one boss where I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and also I believe that uh, it's going to be on Game Pass, so it's, oh, cool. it's an Xbox exclusive, going to be on Game Pass, so you're gonna, if you have Game Pass you're going to be able to play it really easy. Um, um, and if you haven't played the previous one, go play it! Uh, you might cry, because I did. It's, but in the like... <laughs> totes of motion. <laughs> totes of motion, you know, Doom Eternal is also pretty emotional. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. anger is an emotion! <laughs> Uh. Of, of course! <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Oh, Neo! It's Neo 2 coming to PS4 and you're probably going to die in it. A lot. Set in a demon-filled version of Sengoku-era Japan, you'll fight them all with a variety of weaponry, stances and fancy yokai abilities. Neo! Neo 2! Ooh. We've played this, so yes. it looks a lot like Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. Yes. But I think it plays more like Dark, Dark Souls. Souls. Uh, yeah, a huge emphasis on like managing your stamina and attacking enemies in a way that you don't get greedy mm -hmm. and dying over and over again. Uh, the world seems really cool though, it's very pretty, yeah. it's very colourful. Gorgeously designed, yeah. If, you, if you've bounced off Dark Souls because it, it looks grim, uh, and you know, to be fair, it often does, 
then this might be this might be worth trying to see nice if, to see if you like that sort of game uh, yeah. because yeah the it, you know it's really really a riot of color the sort of special attacks look really beautiful mm -hmm. um, the, the the Japanese folklore that it's drawing from is really cool. The kind really of yokai, cool. su supernatural monsters. Like, yeah, it, it, the, some of the creatures that we came, the yokai that we came up against, it was just like, oh my goodness, what yeah. is this? This is amazing. It's terrifying, but it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my, the only concern I have with Neo 2 is that, is that it's not that it's not going to be hard enough, because we've played it and it's definitely rock hard. But I'm, I don't know, I'm worried that there could just be some some random boss or some random enemy that is just like the dial is just up just that bit too far and it just it just is too much for brick wall for people yeah to push i think past. well the first one people were really pleasantly surprised by it it was a bit of a kind of like sleeper hit amongst the people who like that sort of game yeah so i think this is more of the same you've also got some more customization version like options in this one yep so you can make your character which is pretty cool yeah i'm 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 keen to give this, this one a go be the way in. Save up those bells because you're probably going to be owing Tom Nook a whole bunch of them once Animal Crossing New Horizons comes to the Nintendo Switch. Yes, he's got a deserted island getaway package which will see you set up your homestead and make new friends out to sea. Just hook this game to my veins. Hook, hooked Just, on the Nook. I'm hooked on the Nook. Hashtag Nook hooked. <laughs> yeah, um, the Animal Crossing games are so charming. I feel like they occupy. <laughs> they, yeah, they're, they're sort of in the same space as like The Sims in that they're quite chill, yeah. uh, you know, sort of like life simulation thing. But the, there's just an odd sense of humour to them mm -hmm. that I really, really enjoy, and just that idea of like living with your neighbours. The island setting, mm. I'm really excited for, just because I think it's going to be very pretty and very, very relaxing. And hopefully, as with previous Animal Crossing games, a real surprising amount of depth um, and loads to do. And of course, Saturday night, I hope we'll be jamming out with KK Slider, <laughs> cancelling my <laughs> real world plans, because I've got a hot date with a cool dog. <laughs> Oh my goodness, we should live stream a concert. I'm yeah. Like, I mean, well, we, we will really have to give up a Saturday night, but, but yeah. it's worth it. <laughs> There's this interesting thing uh, they've done where you can only have one island per Nintendo Switch console. So even though on the Switch you can have multiple user profiles, you can only have what like. You have to be on the same island. Well, you can only. No, you can only have like one island per console. <gasps> Which so means only one you, person can play on it means, the Switch. Yeah, it means if you share a Nintendo Switch with someone, then you probably you can't both play different games of, of Animal Crossing. Which is it's the way that it's worked in the past on Nintendo consoles, but those ones didn't really have like user profiles. But there you go, there you go. It's still I, I still suspect it will be very good and, yes. and, and absolutely delightful. <laughs> Chaotic online brawler Bleeding Edge comes to Xbox and PC. With 4v4 multiplayer battles, things are sure to be ridiculous in this teamwork-focused game that prefers you to get up close and personal. This is interesting. This is interesting. It's made by the same people. It's made by Ninja Theory, who oh, made wow, okay. Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice, yep. and Devil May Cry DMC. Okay. So we know they can right. do like the combat thing. Yeah. We know that they can do like cool world building things. Up close brawly sort of combat. <laughs> It's, it, yes, um, instead yeah. of it, the like, sword fighting in that was very satisfying. It seems like they're going for a real kind of like trying to capture that Overwatch vibe where there's like a whole, a very, very a whole roster disparate, of interesting characters. Yeah, yeah. all different characters, all with different strengths. But unlike Overwatch, it's not a shooter. Is no, it really? it's is it? like there are some people who have like ranged attacks. Right. But a lot of it is you like you've got to go in and hit people, mm. and so it's slightly different tactically. You've got you've really got to work as a team. It seems as well, like because you know Overwatch is obviously very team based. Yeah. You're going to be, I think, even more on your own when you just like run in, going, everyone fight me once. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's going to be okay and it's not going to go the way of like Battleborn, which... I'm just trying to remember Battleborn. Exactly. <laughs> Battleborn was the one, there was a character that was like basically a mushroom. Um, that's the one that stands out to me that I remember. But basically there was oh, Gearbox. Oh, Battleborn! Yes, Gearbox yes, yes, were yes, making yes. Okay, yeah, yeah, a, yeah. Another, another Overwatch basically. Okay, and they would yeah. have been like, yeah, we're doing this thing. And then Blizzard were like, Overwatch. And was like, oh no. As Blizzard are <laughs> like to do, <laughs> they, yeah, with a giant blizzard. Here we fist. go. So, yeah, mm. so it'd be interesting to see if Bleeding Edge can carve out its own little kind of yeah. nook in that market. I wonder Not what Tom the esports crowd will make of it. Yeah, it'd be interesting. It. 
Put on your rescue neckerchiefs, it's time to save some more Pokemon as a Pokemon in Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Rescue Team DX. Recrafted for the Nintendo Switch, you'll answer questions to find out what Pokemon you'll become and create a team of Pokemon not to fight for a trainer in battle, but to save the world from natural disasters. They have little bandanas. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you need that's to know. That's all you need to know. I think this has the potential to be really exciting because the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series, people who've played those games absolutely love them. They're like the better than fans the main games. are rabid. Yeah, people, you know, the the people who've played them, they say this is better than po the Pokemon main games by a considerable distance. Like yeah. they are um the story is is very is emotionally affecting. Um you know, so it's got like a, it's got that proper sort of RPG storyline to it. Yeah. Obviously, it's cool you that you're a Pokemon. You wake up as a Pikachu, and, possibly, or whichever. Uh, yeah, and you're talking to you? other Pokemon. You yeah. know, all I've seen are the trailers, but this doesn't look like it's anything near a sort of Link's Awakening grade no. remaster. This looks like visually, it looks a lot more basic. I would say it's, uh, I would say, you're gonna maybe be relying on the story to sweep you away with this one right. which was always the case because it was a handheld game to begin with so the yeah. visuals were never that great it might look a little basic even though it's a remaster but uh i although i haven't played it myself i am assured by many many people who've, who've played the mystery dungeon games that they are that, that in there is an, is an excellent story and there are several games as well in the series so i would love to see them you know remaster remaster more of them yes chew we all know Alex is the extremely capable one who does all the talking in the Half-Life series. Well, now she's getting her own game in Half-Life Alex, a VR first-person adventure wherein she fights the Combine before the events of Half-Life 2. Valve actually made a Half-Life game. It and it's happened. out. And it's out in March. Ah. <laughs> the year of our Lord's 2020. I, th this is absolutely huge, I think. We're all Half-Life fans. Mm -hmm. Those games were incredible. I think we'd all given up hope mm -hmm. of ever having another game in the Half-Life universe. It's not Half-Life 3. It's not even going to move the story on from Half-Life 2, Episode 2, which was the last one they released ages and years and years ago now. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, it is a, it is a new Half-Life game. And you can probably count on one or two hands the number of people in the world who will play it. <laughs> it's a VR game. But mm. it works on pretty much all PC compatible Yes, that's VR true. That's, that's really cool. I was watching some the videos HCV, earlier. HCV yeah. Vive, uh, the, the Oculus Rift. Yes, I'm, I'm slightly torn. Part of me wants to like just, f I don't know, uh, throw away enough furniture that I have space in, in my home to, to play it. And to and to you know buy all the kit and, and play it, but then I'm also thinking um, maybe I'll just watch like a playthrough on YouTube or something yeah. because I just I I need to know I need but to know. But I want to pick up the individual bullets. I know. Put them on. I know. It, <laughs> VR games are so satisfying to play, especially shooters. Yeah. And like just the idea of headshotting a combine and hearing the little <laughs> life support like <laughs> thing like from oh. I love I love Half Life so much. I love that world. I love Alex. She's one of the coolest video game characters ever. Um, yeah. As you say, she does all the talking. Um, I wouldn't be excited about the head crabs in VR. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, putting on a VR headset is a bit like putting on a head crab. So it's like, <laughs> you're already, you're already yeah, halfway there. You've already got you've already got something attached to your head <laughs> that's, that's draining your resources. So yeah. So yeah, there you go. But yeah, I, I mean, ah. Oh, the Half-Life game, mm -hmm. as I live and breathe. So, those are just some of the games coming out this month. What a month! Luke, which are you most excited for? Do you I think this is. I, th I think this month is like my most anticipated games of the year, probably, which yeah. are Doom Eternal and Animal Crossing. And I'm completely torn between <laughs> those. Different ends of the scale. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I want to play them both loads and have really weird dreams. <laughs> yeah. That's the goal. <laughs> if I had to choose one, gosh, I don't know. Probably Animal Crossing. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt me to say, as we got halfway through that, I was imagining. I think it would have hurt uh, either one you said. Yeah. yeah, Animal Crossing. I just yeah. gotta, I just gotta, I gotta get on that island, man. Yeah. Hook me up. Hooked on the nook. Hooked on the nook. <laughs> and hashtag hooked on the nook. Uh, uh, yeah, how about you? Uh, I think Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Above. Doom I, and Animal Crossing I know, and the Half-Life game. I know, I know, but I just this felt such... must be some powerful such, magic. Oh, I just felt such a connection to that game. Like, okay, uh, okay. when I played Or in the Blind Forest, uh, it, 
I think it was like 90% the music though. <laughs> I, was like, da, 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 da. I just love a good platformer like that. Um, but I'm also looking forward to Doom and Animal Crossing and Alex. So those are the March games. Mm -hmm. Did we miss any? Uh, we may have. Maybe. Well, we have to like be s select with our, our seven that we choose. So th there's probably some gold that we haven't been able to include. Yeah. If um, on the off chance none of these games take your fancy, yeah. then check the comments and write in the comments if there's any other games coming out in March to help mm -hmm. your fellow travellers. Yes. And we will see you next time. In April. Rip and tear, Tom Nook. Thank <laughs> you.